Hello and welcome to my F123 Lamborghini Mighty Grillo here today for part 41 for the Belgian Grand Prix where we have some big news from the paddock. We start with Lamborghini and the reigning world champion has now got a new teammate as Michael Schumacher has decided to terminate his contract with Lamborghini due to poor progression in the car. Lamborghini have managed to sign Oscar Piastri from McLaren after breakaway clause in his contract allowed him to leave. McLaren have then gone and signed Joe from Alfa Romeo in what looks to be a good move for them as it was rumoured that Zach Brown was keeping an eye on Joe's development at Alfa Romeo. Alfa Romeo have then gone and signed Enzo Fittipaldi from Alfa Tauri to replace Joe. Fittipaldi didn't have any breakaway clause in his contract. The Helmut Marco and Christian Horner were happy to let the Brazilian driver go as they weren't happy with his performances and wanted him out at the end of the season anyway. With Fittipaldi going to Alfa Romeo it has allowed Red Bull to promote another one of their hot prospects in Dennis Hauger, who was racing in Super Formula in Japan after winning the F2 Championship last season. There was also news coming out of Aston Martin as the two-time world champion Fernando Alonso has announced his retirement from the sport for the second time and has made it clear in an interview that this time it is for good. That's all the news ahead of the final race before the summer break. Now it's time for the Bel Belgian Grand Prix weekend to begin. So this is the grid then for the Brazilian Grand Prix sprint and it's Brown on pole alongside Carlos Sainz. It's an almost Mercedes second row headed by Lewis Hamilton, then it's Leclerc and Fernando Alonso, then it's the two Alpines, Max and Joe, Bottas and Sonoda, Stroll and Piastri, Albon and Lando, Fittipaldi and Sargent, then it's the two Alpha Tauris, and the final of the grid is the two passes headed by Kevin Magnussen. So we're here on the grid then, and a lot has happened in between last mile at Silverson and here in Belgium. We've got ourselves a new teammate in Oscar Piastri. We've put our differences aside from season one at Silverstone and earlier on in the season in China. But most importantly, we're racing here in the sprint for the Belgian Grand Prix. Science has beat us off the line into turn one. We've just stayed ahead of Hamilton and Fernando Alonso. As now we plunge down the hill through our bridge. We're looking to re-overtake the Ferrari as we need a good result after what happened last time out at Silverstone. We're right on the back now of, of Sainz but we've dropped back into George Russell. He's now side by side of us as we go through Blanchard on side by side. We stay ahead of our championship rival. Here we are hunting down this season towards the end now of lap 3 and we're all over the back of sides now we're trying to get a good exit out of the bust of chicane and it looks like that we may have just so as we go to the outside of Carlos sides try and get the wider line and we couldn't quite do it but now that set them up beautifully as we go down the hill now we're gonna do it side by side through our rouge over the top of Radion and we just got our nose ahead but science isn't done yet and science fends us off for now but now we go down the camera straight now into Lake Home round the outside we go on science and we do eventually retake the lead of the Grand Prix And now those sides on the back of us, this is the final lap of the sprint, lap 8 of 8. Signs now on the back of us as we head down the back straight. Signs goes to the inside, we squeeze right to the inside. Now into the chicane, we're going to hold it around the outside. Signs can't hold it on the inside, that's the back out of it. But now we're heading towards the line. We're nearly three wide as we go through blocking on. Science has beat us going into the final sector. But we're not having that. It's down the inside into the bus stop chicane. Drop down. We go deep though. We go deep. Science on the outside. We force him wide. It's a drag race to the line. And we just get past and win the sprint. Yes, nice work, mate. 
Very, very dramatic ending. We kept on losing. And this is the result then from the sprint. And your grid. We win. It is signs and George Russell Pitcast. He finds himself P4. That's good for him. Piastri on his first race for us will start all the way down in 14th. So here we go then. It's a wet race here in the Spa. It's meant to dry up. But we're racing here in Brazil for the second time and unlike the sprints we've beaten signs off the line but he's nearly got us once more into the first corner the fend him off for struggling to find the grip on these four wet tyres as we plunge down the hill and towards oh it's average through as we go and now Sainz sees a chance as we have to lift Sainz takes the lead of the Grand Prix, we're gonna stay there with him. As now George is trying to get up our inside, but we're gonna send it late up the inside of the Ferrari. We go off the track, we make contact with the Ferrari. George now finds a way past the Carlos Sainz, but we keep the lead at the start here in Belgium. So then, as we skip on towards the end of the opening lap, we run a bit wide now as we enter the final sector. Now George may have a run on us here as we go. Make a bit of a mistake as we're struggling to find the grip on this opening lap and near the side by side. Like it was on the opening lap of the sprint. But George thinks better of it. Very, very tricky uh, conditions. As now we come into the bus stop again for the first time and we've gone straight on. We find our way back onto the track and George has done the old switch and ruin us. But now we're on the back, we want this first place back, we need this first place back. If we want to stay in the championship hunt, as we go, take the wider line, try to find some more grip. And now, down the inside as we head towards the range, we did it to size in the sprint, and we've done it to George in the race. But this time we stay ahead, briefly. Science came back at us, it doesn't look like George is going to be able to now, but he's going to try as we go into the chicane. George is too far back to do anything, but we retake the lead, and in the background, and what an overtake Science to make it a Mercedes 2 3 and on to lap 2 now. We've once again gone off the track of the bus stop chicane, and but this time we're a sitting duck. George has gone to the outside, we nearly pushed him off the track, but we get the exit, somehow we found the grip to get past the Mercedes there, but we've run a bit wide, and now George is rolls reverse nearly, no, he thinks better of it, as we go down into a rouge for the, for the third time, the two Mercedes looking to make it another 1-2, very good race last time at Silverstone, they were just too quick. And now he may be double teamed here, how much on the inside? He's got the double toe. George now trying to roll around the outside of his teammate, Hamilton on the inside. Hamilton's got up the inside. Hamilton's got the job done on his teammate. Now, heading into the bus stop chicane once again. We've gone deep. This time not off the track. Hamilton is trying to go around the outside. Hamilton's got the exit trying to overtake us off the track there. And now we head down towards the source. Into time one and the source. We've gone deep in the source. We're off the track. And Lewis Hamilton, there he is, slips through since thank you very, very much. And we tried, we tried the move at the inside. I wish we could run though, and that might leave us vulnerable now to George. But we're not looking in the mirrors, we're only looking forward as we head down the back straight. And we're gonna send it late up the inside. Can we get the car slowed down? Yes, we can. We retake the lead of the Grand Prix as the track is a drying a lot here. Fernando Alonso has got here on the act as well. As now we run very, very off the track and we come steaming back across. That could have ended a very, and very nasty there. But I think it's ready 
for the intermediate tyres and there's an Albion in the background that seems to think the same as me but those at the front Hamilton, Alonso have always stayed out so if we've timed this right then we could be gaining some time on those that were probably just behind us let's be honest but we're going to have to try and find some grip early on in this stint and see how much time we gain at the end of this opening lap on the intermediate tyres as we go down the back straight lap 5 now they've got a couple of that laps extra comes Lewis Hamilton for his intermediate tyres as the rain continues to ease it it's meant to stop by the end of this Grand Prix. Now this is us heading down the pit straight. There's Hamilton going down the pit lane. We enter the first corner and come out of the first corner and we're ahead of Lewis Hamilton and we've also pulled out a nice little margin over the seven time world champion. And these in front of us, the Haas, are all still on the full wet tyres. So if we can get our way through these fairly quickly, we should be able to increase our gap on Lewis Hamilton. So I don't think he's going to get through these as quickly as we can as we overtake Logan Sargent there in the Williams. They're just sitting down because the wets aren't the way to be anymore. And the end of lap six we passed the other Williams of Alex Albon who's staying out as we go deep Albon trying to get back up our inside Williams it's everyone now is pretty much boxing this is Alonso and also George Russell you'll just see there for a second there he is and we're boxing now for the Inters and this is Lewis Hamilton from a net P2 and hunting us down He's not doing that anymore because he's pulling off to retire from the Belgium Grand Prix. What's going on in Mercedes? Hamilton races over. Joe is stayed out on the wet tyres as we retake the lead off the Grand Prix. Here's another one, 92 Williams. Arm pitting. They're staying out on the wet tyres for some reason I don't know now look this is the train behind Logan Sargent because he's still on the wet tyres everyone now scrambling all over the back and Gasly overtakes the American driver it will be Fernando Alonso to overtake him next round the outside at the bus stop again and he stays out does Logan Sargent what are these teams thinking? What are McLaren thinking? As now George goes round the outside. Joe's still going in P2. So is Albon and so is Logan Sargent. The track is meant to dry. Maybe they think they could get, the, get these wet tyres to the crossover point to go straight onto the, the dries. But they're losing so much time. It's in the background. Enzo Fittipaldi on his debut for Alfa Romeo has spun the car around and what was looking like a good race on debut is facing the wrong way and that's sort of kind of the story of his season at Alfa Tauri as well it's now finally lap 10 you can see how far Joe's dropped and the Williams are all down at the back as they finally box for the Inters. It's taken them what about an extra five laps to finally realise the wets aren't the tyres to be on anymore. I think they were trying to do Hamilton's strategy back in Monaco a few years ago when he went straight onto the drives, but this is a Monaco. This is Spa, so much easier to overtake round here. But you can see the gap. Ocon now P2, Bottas P3, and they've really benefited then from the crossover point. We stayed out. I didn't think it was wet enough, it was dry enough 
for the dry tyres, but Alpine and Red Bull both think so. As on to the mediums, goes Esteban Ocon and the Red Bull of Bottas behind him. Now we were keeping the gap to around 10 seconds. We need to get our foot down on this lap. As this is George Russell, the other Mercedes is slowing down and out of the Grand Prix. A double DNF for Mercedes after such a good week weekend for them. Last time out of and with the 1 2, it's now a double DNF for them. And George retired it, retiring in basically the same place as Lewis Hamilton, his teammate, is at the end of lap 14. The track is bone dry compared to the start of the lap and we are going to pit for the mediums. We've learnt from our mistakes from back in Australia where we went to the softs and had no pace for going mediums but the gap between us and Ocon has been cut down drastically now. We've lost five seconds on that lap. So now it's just going to be managing the pace. Meanwhile though, further back, let's take a breather. This is Oscar Piastri on his first race for it, replacing Michael Schumacher. He's now hunting down Lance Stroll, Carlos Sainz and Fittipaldi for the final points of the Grand Prix as this is this is Stroll and Sainz going wheel to wheel Sainz has just gone backwards since the start of the race maybe that contact with us has left him with some damage and on Ferrari strategies in a race like this doesn't help either but Stroll and Piastri both passed them and now this is this is Alonso and Stroll getting past the Alpha Tauri of Lawson who came so close to points at Silverstone. He's also so close to points here as well, lap 20. And now this is Oscar Piastri getting past um, Halga, not Lawson. Halga doing a good job on his debut. Around the outside, turns the inside. And that is going to be P11 for Piastri. But we're going to round the final corner. We're going to be back to winning ways. We win the Belgium Grand Prix. Valtteri Bottas managed to overtake Esteban Ocon for P2. We've got the gap up to around 6 seconds. Ocon gets P2. Three. And on the final straight, Oscar Piastri managed to get the final point of the day, so he gets a point on debut for us. But that has been the Belgian Grand Prix. If you look at this end, you would not believe it was raining at the start. And that was one of those races where you just got to keep going and that anyone can find something out of it, any sort of result out of a race like that. A double DNF for Mercedes as well after their 1-2 last time out in Silverstone. In terms of the championship then, George keeps his 149 points. We though now cut the gap down to 17 points with 132 points as getting maximum points this weekend. We therefore jump Hamilton who's on a 112 points and 37 back from George Russell, his teammate. In terms of the constructors, Mercedes have a 261 point. We have 178 points. So the gap now we cut down to 83. It was 118. Aston Martin a P3 with 129 points and 132 points back behind the Mercedes. But that's been the Belgium Grand Prix. Once again, I had issues with the footage with the race corrupting but i hope you enjoyed it it's now time for the summer break we come back in monza and i'll see you then goodbye